The PlayStation, Brad. Wow, you got it. I got a PlayStation. The hottest I had to, console on the block. I had to give the EB Games 30 Genesis games to get one. Wow. Uh, but is, that, is that really what you did? That's really what I did. I mowed a lot of lawns to yeah. get a PlayStation. <laughs> yeah, it's... Uh, the PlayStation's great, but I then later probably bought back most of those Genesis games. Also years great. Years later. Genesis, also great. Yeah. I, I, I bet I paid way less than $300 for mm. the, those so Genesis came, games, though. You, you came out ahead. Yeah, I, I, probably, I probably got out of the Genesis at the right time. You made an investment in yourself. I did. And I made an investment in the PlayStation. Yeah. This is the PlayStation Classic, uh, which has 20 games on it, like the... Nintendo, like the the Super NES Classic, like the NES Classic. They sure did. There's a PlayStation Classic. <laughs> they sure did name it exactly like uh, those things yeah. that they didn't make. Yeah, they sure did. Um, and so I don't know. We got this thing in. I have not taken it out of the box, Ooh. so I figured we would take it out of the box. Yeah. And then hook it up What's and then the play some emulated PlayStation games. Wait, uh, you mean they're not real? Nothing's real, Brad. They're fake. Not anymore. Magical fake PlayStation magical games? PlayStation games. Mm-hmm. All right. So. On the side of the box here, uh, we get some cable lengths and stuff. Is that kind of pretty much original box art? It is, right? It's yeah. This is, I I that's think so. Basically, this, this, the U.S. Uh, box. Yeah, they kind of recreated the uh, the U.S. box there. Yeah. Other than you know, this doesn't mm. USB AC adapter not included. USB didn't exist back then. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. There was a time when there was no such thing as USB. Um, the SCPH one thousand R. Okay, let's see what we got here. All right, as advertised, there is Whoa. some Things tiny. Some documentation. Here's my hand for reference. And then, yeah, there's a here's a iPhone XS Max for wow. reference. Uh, okay, let's okay, let's just keep going, I guess, and. We got this. This is uh, this is smaller than I thought it would be. Yeah. Uh, how big were those Nintendo things? Probably about this. Uh, you know, this yeah. percent reduction or somewhere thereabouts. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, oh, it's very light. You know, <laughs> makes sense. Uh, sure. We've got just USB and HDMI on the back. USB for power. Uh, this open button. <clears throat> How's the button feel? Accurate? Mm, n- no, because it did. You know, this isn't hitting a latch that's lifting a lid. It's just a you know pushing in to be a, a button. It's more of a squish. The reset button has a click to it mm. that the original I don't think had. I don't think so. Uh, and this doesn't click in and click out. It's just a press. Um, USB ports on the front. Y- yeah, those are just USB ports, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Or if you had a. Wow. Yeah. Got your hands on a USB DualShock. Look at the airboard. You can. It's very light. It could fly. Uh, hmm. Does this? No. No. The the, port game, the Game Shark port does not does come not off. Actually, come off. Um, huh. Yeah. Cool. Okay. And then in here we got an HDMI cable. We've we've brought our own, so we're not gonna use that one. Uh, let me add it. What do I? Okay. Hang on. Okay, there's little latches here. Pop those, do that, then take this bit out. All right, controllers. We're in. Uh, we got here, why don't you take one of these? I'll take this one. Man, were they really this small? Uh, I mean, I'm not questioning the authenticity. I, I, be, I, had one, right. I had one in my bag because I just played uh, through all of Tony Hawk One and most of Tony Hawk Two with one of with an original one of these pretty recently. Um, this feels off in some way. Huh. Like the plastic is a different coating. Hmm. Uh, you know, whatever. Uh, it, it, Close enough, probably. But size wise, good enough for government work. Uh, pretty much, pretty much there. In my mind, it's bigger. Yeah, but, but unfortunately, I brought that PlayStation home uh, to play some games on it, so I don't have for, it here. Probably goes for most things in your memory. Yeah, yeah. Uh, huh. Seems okay. Yeah. Like the D-pad feels just as stiff and unforgiving Oosh. as it did in '95. Just like, yeah. oh, how am I going to do fireballs on it? Oosh. We made do. We eventually got there. Yeah. But out of the gate, though, I remember that being 
hard, depending, well, depending on the game. In fact, that game is on this collection where it was hard. Battle Arena Toshinden. Oh, right. Couldn't get thing. couldn't got, get moves to come out. I think that or was... Or I could, I could do fireballs to the right, but not to the left, stuff like that. Um, I think that was the one game I bought with my PlayStation. Yeah, well, yeah, that was kind of, you know, it was like that. Tekken 1 wasn't quite launched, but it was close. Uh... All right. Okay. So this is, I mean, this is just straight USB. I thought that this would be like a, a little more uh, custom. And with it not being custom, that makes me have different thoughts about what you might be able to do with one of these hmm. down the line. I wonder, if, I wonder what happens if you plug these into a PC. Yeah, we're going to have to find out. You're going to have to find, well, you could find a USB adapter or something and, and figure it out. All right, we'll plug in our... Uh, HDMI back here, and then for power, they have just included a USB, a micro uh, USB cable for the back, and then no power brick, mm -hmm. just a USB cable. Just uh, like those Nintendo yeah, things. Yeah, yeah. I weird, guess they just it's assume a strange that trend. everyone has those, yeah. or they're going to plug them into the USB ports on their TV or something. I don't isn't, know. isn't that very Japanese to not include yeah, I guess power? So. Like I, I guess heard that about like the 3DS. Yeah, yeah, they time. did that for the 3DS. So we've got uh, USB ports on our power strip here. I'm just going to plug that into that. And this is uh, probably going to spit out 720p. All right. I believe that is the case. So let's plug it in. See what happens. And, oh, God. Get in there. Okay. It lit up. The light is orange. Was the light always orange? I don't know. I thought the light wasn't the light green. Mm, I don't know. Hmm. I just bought an Ethernet switch at home, and it, uh, See it's that? green for a gigabit connection and orange for a non-gigabit connection, and I'm very confused by those colors. Hmm. So... Try to hit power again. Did you get anything, Jan? Nope. Okay. Not getting nothing. Ah, I hit it again and it turned green. Aha, got Aha. something. Okay. Okay, so it makes the noise. Thank God. Oh, yeah. well, look how high res that is. Yeah, that... And it... Oh, that seems short, and it doesn't have... Well, I, doesn't, bet, I bet they save the other part for when you're booting up the games. You're probably right. I think that's how it works, right? If you came out of the, like, the memory card interface. Right. In yeah. fact, actually, you should go to the memory card interface and see what it looks like. Okay. Yeah, okay. All right. That looks that's, like... That's fairly... That looks like a screenshot of the memory card interface. Yeah. Uh, what's that thing to the far right? Uh, resume point. Ah, okay. So we got an array of games here. Why don't we just jump in? Okay. Let's play some Toshinden. Yeah, Toshinden One. There it is. Yeah, the Sony so, Computer so Entertainment Europe loading a a European BIOS, I guess. Then hmm. for some reason. Uh, from what I read pre-release, that's only for some games. Yeah. Others, you're getting the American version. That's weird. It is weird. All the Psygnosis games had that screen. Yes, SCE. Oh. Huh. I wonder why. Hey. Traveling fighters brought together by a common destiny now meet at the Battle of Inner yeah. Shinden. Many time. years have passed since this yeah. tournament, known only to those in the underworld, was last held. Some fighters have come for personal okay. glory. Well, like better VO than you would expect from the era. Yeah. Like not even Resident Evil had voice acting that good. Oh, it's start to select everything. Um, all right, all right, all right, yeah. Weak some heavies. Let's, uh... Hmm. Who did I like in this game? I think I was into Foe, because he had those claws. Yeah. Whoop. Oh, yeah. Oof. Uh, so Shinden 3 it has some things going for it. Uh, but to Shinden 1... Are there specials? There yeah, are, there are, right? Yeah. yeah, like I'm basically a, you know, Ryu-like character. Sure. Fireball, Dragon Punch, and such. I don't know what foe... Whoa. There you go. Yeah, okay, that's, that's I remember that. Okay. Does this look sharper to you? Uh, Something about the part of like the you know when I throw the fireball and stuff like some of that stuff just looks maybe I can't a say, little better than it should. Let's say I have loaded up this game in some time. Oh, 
but this music is really something. Yeah. Come on, Moose. I know you're in there. Good one. There you go. Just so stiff. Yeah. I mean, that's that's accurate. I mean, I don't, I don't think this device is doing a bad job. It's just not a good game. Yeah, you know. But you know, also historically, they did what they could with what they had. Yeah, you know, it's who made this, Takara? Yeah. <laughs> they put it out in Japan. I, I don't know if they were the actual developers, but Rungo, Duke. This was the first PlayStation game I ever saw running. It was mind blowing. Yeah, totally. Now, I remember this dude. She's got like she rings or something. Yeah. Oh. Is that a special? I'm not even sure. That was. I thought she's got like some kind of spin kick kind of thing and. There we go. Man, look at those shadows. I don't remember that. <laughs> this is pretty much this game, right? It's just this in an arcade mode. Yeah, that's it's, the whole yeah, game. It's like a one-player mode, two-player mode. There's, there's not much to it. But there's not even like a story. In the, uh, in the single player, right? There are probably endings, but I, I guess I don't remember. I feel like this game's pretty hard to go back to. Yeah, this is... <clears throat> what were you saying about 3? Uh, it like it's actually 3 holds up more than this one does. Okay. And feels a little more responsive. It's got an option in there where you can toggle between like a textured 30 frames per second or like a flat shaded 60. Okay. Man, I kind of can't believe they put this on here when they could have put two ball, two ball number one. I made the rings happen. Ah! I guess maybe toe ball was not the widespread hit that I would like to think. No, it was not. It and was and pretty... you probably want like an English translated toe ball two if you're. That one had its. Uh, also, I want to say weird those thing were going dual. On. Sh those were dual. Those were analog. Like dual analog only? No, not only analog only, but like. Or they just wouldn't be that great. On the controller, regular I controller. I seem to remember like you would click in the sticks to shoot a fireball. What? It was weird. Huh. Um. Oh, wait so that's kind of the thing is like with this not having analog sticks, ah. like it's kind of limiting to the games yeah. they would include. Did they ever come out and say what their reasoning was? Oh, I bet it was just like, hey, we want to adhere to the the launch. You know, it probably gets a lot more expensive to put analog sticks on it. And, yeah, all that other stuff. All right, why don't we uh, let's hit open and see what it does? Okay. Huh? Can only change this when instructions do so while playing games that have multiple discs. Start. Of the, this is a weird menu to even have. All right. I guess we have a resume point for Toshinden now. Uh, Thank God we can come back to that heat yeah. and mash. All right. Cool borders too. All right, well, do we, okay. So do we have? Hmm. Not. I don't like this sound effect. I wonder if Toshinden even had save games. I don't know if there was anything to save. I, you can unlock characters. Oh, so okay. I, I think you can unlock characters even in the first game. Vermilion. Was unlockable, but I, I don't remember if he was in the first one or not. I 
the screen I feel like was in all the that that piracy screen was in all the Psygnosis games that came to the U.S. But it was like in most first party European games. Hmm. So it's weird to see it multiple times. Yeah, it's just weird. Who's Trans World Snowboarding? Trans World Snowboarding was a is a Ladies magazine. And oh. May I have your attention? So I assume they must have gotten the Trans World license for this. Whoa. It's video. It's full screen video. This is extreme. Awesome postage stamp ass Sega CD yeah. nonsense. The video takes up the whole screen. This web systems joint. You, you, what do you think on. How are you on snowboarding games? Uh, I probably played three of them in my life. Yeah. I've never been a huge snowboarding. I just don't think most snowboarding games are very good. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, some of the SSX stuff, obviously super popular. Yeah. People seem to like 1080 okay. Yep. Yeah. I, I, I liked Amp 3 a lot. Well, yes, but... The snowboarding in that was actually not bad either. Okay. Like the... <laughs> Amp 3 had a little more going on, Yes. Though. Whoa. Yeah, this was all first party, right? Oh, no? Yes. Well, Web Systems developed it, but I, Sony published it in the U.S. Okay. Yeah, I never got much of a sense of, of whether Cool Borders was very popular or not. I, I people, de I think there are, are definitely people that fondly remember the Cool Borders franchise. But I, I couldn't tell you if 2 is the right game to include, or or if 1 would have been a better historical choice, or, or what. But. Jin's got max speed maxed, but Yagi is better on balance. Yaggy's all like, whoa, check out my pointy goatee. Yeah. Pants, arrow pointing down. A lot of 90s in this stuff. Yeah. It's real cheesy looking visual treatments for some of this stuff. But I bet in some cases they're limited to the games they can choose for this because of licensing and oh, music yeah. and all the other stuff. Yeah, I mean, when they announced the full list, I feel like it, that was the entire response was, where is X, Y, and Z, right? Right, yeah. And that, this is always going to be the case because everyone's going to have their own games they remember. But, well, yeah. But it seems like there are just like, you know, here's a thing devoted to like remembering the PlayStation 1 that doesn't have a Gran Turismo game on right. it. You're like, what? Well, right. What are we, what are we even doing? Uncool. Yeah, my list for this thing would look about 90% different yeah. from this, but, you know, what can you do? I would put an Einhander on my PlayStation 5. Oh, sure. For instance. I think it's uh, silly that this wouldn't have a Crash Bandicoot game on. Yeah. I mean, you, the business case there is extremely obvious. Why they didn't do that, considering Activision was ah! actively selling Crash Bandicoot products. Right. But you're not wrong. Yeah, especially because we just found out that Crash Bandicoot is the highest grossing PlayStation game of all time. Yeah, yeah. That's Oh, man, this steering just sucks. I have to lean, maybe I have to analog stick, or uh, to... Like use the shoulder buttons to lean or something. Oh god. I'm. Yeah, some of those polygons get pretty swimmy up close. Yeah. See some of those seams. Is it worth looking at the the licenses on this thing? I mean, yeah, we, sure. we already know that it uses PCSX. Yeah, yeah. For the emulation. But yeah. It's, it's, that thing is pretty accurate, right? Yeah, it's a pretty good. Uh, I tried to hit buttons and nothing happened. I feel like over the years of Demo Derby and every time a snowboarding game comes out, I feel like it always goes exactly like this for me. I'm just like, I, this doesn't feel good at all. Okay. Bust a trick, like crash into the fucking wall. How am I even supposed to... Oh, I go first person. I tried to hit. I, 
said like down an R1 would be a flip, and I tried to hit that. That reminds me that I would put bust a move on this thing. Oh yeah. I mean the Japanese bust a move. Oh, you mean bust a groove? Or bust a groove if yeah. you like. But you put bust a move the uncensored. Yes. That's bold. That's the version I had. Yeah. I don't even remember what was censored about it. One of the songs said the N word. Whoa, okay. Didn't realize that. I got uncool, but I got 51 points. I mostly just played Atomic Playboy over and over. Uh, yeah, no, the, the song about hamburgers was, uh, had a little something in it. There's was, was something, something surprising in there. All right, well, that was uh, the uh, world record uh, best attempt at ever playing Cool Wars 2 that has ever happened, so uh, you're welcome to everyone out there. I think we've given this game its due. What are you hitting reset? I'm hitting reset to get game? back to this menu, okay. and then open gives you that disc menu. Right. All right, how about I play some Destruction Derby, and then, uh, then I'll hand you this thing for a while. Oh. Sure. <laughs> Thanks. I didn't. I don't actually know what game is next. I just, <laughs> How conveniently. I just timed. really want. I was going to hand it to you, and then I realized I really want to play Destruction. No, no. I've, I've. I don't think I've ever actually played this game, so you definitely should. I maybe rented it one time. This was this was a launch game, wasn't it? Uh, if not right at launch, then very close. It was a very early game. I'm going uh, to pull up a list of launch games. This was a cool effing game at the time. Ubisoft Reflections. Makers of Driver? Yep. Also not on this collection. Watchdogs? Well, I mean, Driver debuted on the PlayStation, right? Right. And I guess was a big deal? Uh, people liked Driver. Alright. Let's play some Destruction Derby here. Yep, okay, yeah. Oh, wow. It, like, what? still has the link cable stuff in oh, it, even wow. though there's no way to actually... What happens if I hit X here? Huh. It locks up. Okay. That's funny. Uh, yeah, this was a link cable game, which was pretty cool. <laughs> Uh, looks like this game did not make a launch. But it must have been pretty early, right? Yeah. Like this was, was definitely first year or so. Probably been around the first year, so yeah. Psygnosis? Yep. Okay. Do I remember a bunch of little triangles flying all over the place when the cars crash? Yeah. Okay. This, this. Maybe I have played this. Yeah, they made a handful of sequels to it. Mm hmm. Yeah, I feel like this is like slightly sharper. Hmm. Not that that's like a bad thing, but. Well, you know, we would have. Yep, look at that. They're already flying. Uh, you know, we would have been playing these games on a CRT back then. Yeah. That's part of it, probably. Then again, you probably have played these games on LCDs in the recent past. Yeah. I assume is PCSX pretty much the go-to on PC. Is there anything better? Um, I feel like the, the PS1 emulator stuff got a little muddy because a lot of stuff got ported all over the place and branched uh, and forked. Yeah. What is the PlayStation One emulator that's been doing weird enhancement like? Giving games depth of field and that's a, um, fixing fixing the vertex problem and stuff like that. That's a fork of uh, that's a fork that runs in Lib Retro, uh, the RetroArch kind of framework uh, that is doing most of that stuff. But, but man, there used to be like what, EPSXE. That was a big one for a while. There's uh, No Cash PSX, which is. Uh, you know, it doesn't really do a lot of the enhancement stuff, but, you know, it's always focused on... That guy's always focused his work on, on accuracy. 
uh, and, and like debugging tools, which is kind of cool yeah. uh, if, you, if you need something like that. Uh, And then uh, there's a PlayStation emulator in Mednafen, which is a multi-platform emulator that is the one that I think got forked and brought into LibRetro, where it's called Beetle. Uh, but I'm not sure if that is original work in Mednafen or if that's a port of something, or if that's maybe like a port of this or, or something like that. I, I don't actually know. Just saying words. So, you know, you're handling and steering and stuff gets worse over time. And uh, I think the the part of this game that kind of lost me a little bit was that it was so focused on racing. Yeah, I was about to say, doesn't doesn't it have an arena mode, like just a big old yeah. classical demolition derby, just a bunch of cars in a giant? Pretty sure it does. Yeah. Running into each other. That's what I remember seeing on the demo kiosk at the Blockbuster. Yeah. Instead of this twelve lap race here. And then also, like, the scoring was based a lot on how much you made the other car spin, which was not really in line with a lot of, like, real-life Destruction Derby scoring. Uh, you racing cool. That's me. Where's Parappa? Yeah, why isn't Parappa right. on it? I mean, they, they recently reissued Parappa. Parappa's on PS4. I guess, so. yeah. Yes. Destruction Derby. Is there, do. is there a single rhythm game on this whole thing? No. Because isn't this, this is kind of the platform where rhythm games were birthed? Wouldn't yeah, you say? Yeah, but a lot of, you know, you're going to get Parappa or like a handful of other controller ones or you're going to have to suddenly require a dance mat or a guitar or something like that. And that's yeah. not really going to work out. Parappa kind of the first big one? It was. It's definitely the first rhythm game I remember seeing. Um, yeah, it's maybe probably the first big one. Maybe there was stuff before that. You know, like, I think Konami was doing its stuff at the time, but it wasn't. That none of that had really happened in the U.S. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, as a, as a like, really comprehensive cross-section of what made the PlayStation matter, this thing is kind of lacking. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. It's because, uh, like, yeah, yeah, I just keep thinking of games. I mean, you know, obviously it's got Final Fantasy VII and Metal Gear Solid, right? Second three, this driller. Uh, you know, well, it, like Destruction Derby is a game I would call like a big early yes. PlayStation game, yes, but this not one, really one that you talk about anymore. I think this this rates. Yeah, like I saw enough of this game on the list of twenty. Yes. this is definitely like a valid choice for sure. Like I don't even have an attachment to this game, but I saw enough of it around back yeah. when this thing was new that this yeah. And then you get into weird stuff where like. Maybe the first Ridge Racer is the most historically relevant, but they ended up going with Type 4. Yeah, which, which, uh, which I, is I, probably a better game. It's a, it is a significantly well, better game. Yeah. Uh, that's probably the that's may, well that's maybe the best Ridge Racer. But again, like not the one I would have seen at the Blockbuster, and right. went, and went like holy shit, look at that thing. And also that game was cool uh, because it, you know there was a custom controller that you used to play it. Or at least sure. in Japan, uh, the the Jog Con, uh, which had a little, you know, a little wheel with a little bit of force feet. Oh man, my car is pulling to the right real hard. Whoa, <laughs> guys, got it in for you. Yeah. Oh. I'll tell you the one thing I really wish this thing had was that original demo disc they played <laughs> in stores before this the thing dinosaur? came out. Dinosaur? Yeah, the dinosaur and Polygon Man. The, yeah. the Tyrannosaurus Rex. It seems like something should be like an Easter egg. Like you, yeah, I, you hit a button or something, would, you get something like that. Like I'm not, I'm not gonna buy one of these, but it would make me very happy to find out that that is buried in here somewhere. That would be cool. Because like I like. No lie, the night that I walk into a Circuit City and saw that fucking T-Rex demo playing on a demo kiosk, and yeah. that was like months before the PlayStation came right, out, yeah. was like a life-changing moment. 
like the second I saw that thing running, I was it was just a tech demo. Right. Yeah. And yeah. I was just like, just like check out this dinosaur. It wasn't like the second I saw that thing, I was like, well, get one of those as soon as humanly possible. Yeah. Ugh. Ugh. This car is too messed up. That car's dead. I don't need to hit it anymore. There we go. Oh. You killed the car. Most of these cars appear to be dead. Wow, that was a great Woo! Alright. Look at that crowd. Yeah. Okay, let's just move on. Okay. That's Destruction Derby. Here. Alrighty. Next. Okay. Here we go. I wonder what this game would do if we tried to change discs, because this game is That's, at least at least yeah, aware of multiple kinda, discs. After we like I want to hit that almost immediately yeah, as when, soon as it when we're when we're done with it, we should hit that and see. Because like if, if the thing aware. is smart enough to know when it needs to be changed, then why doesn't it just automatically do it? Right. Well again, I think they Mm. Did I hit the button and lock it up? No. Weird. Well, what? Only when instructed well, to do why? so. Well, I think fun I, is that? Again, I think they're trying to give you the experience of having to manually change discs. Fun. I guess it saves them from having to like create a bunch of new menus and stuff that... Man, look at that logo. <laughs> it's been a long time. Back when it meant something. Okay. Final Fantasy came to the PlayStation. Yeah. God. Who would have thought? What a man. It's like an earth shattering announcement. The betrayal. <laughs> Top 10 Final Fantasy betrayals. I don't remember if people got super mad about that or not. I'm sure somebody did. People who only own an N64. Oh, weird. Some weird lag. Or it was. Wasn't that, doesn't, wasn't this menu always kind of... Maybe. I think it was trying to... Ah, sure. I don't know how much of this is the right amount to play. Maybe just a little bit of the intro or something. Yeah, I'll probably just get into like the first couple battles or something. I mean, it does get you into action fairly yeah, quickly. Yeah. This thing was pretty mind-blowing when it came out. I will not lie. Another bad snowboarding game. Yeah. Yes. I've played through this game exactly once in 1997. Now, what kept you from going back to it? Just I, uh, mostly that I just don't really replay games. Yeah. Because there's always something new to play. But it wasn't like, oh, my experience with it was so perfect, I would hate to have it ruined, or no, no not that kind, not that type of reverence. I don't. I think six is the only one I've ever replayed at all. Yeah. If that tells you anything. Hey, I don't know if you know this, but she, um... What? Uh, well, you know, I, I, won't, I, won't spoil, I won't spoil it Come for on. you. I, I haven't even gotten to play it yet. Pretty serious hype around this game. You can say. At the time. <laughs> and in the years following. Well, yeah, but that's of a different nature. Yeah. Do you but think it, it deserves it? Uh, I feel like I should withhold judgment. So I don't have a bunch of people yelling at me. So no, then. This is <laughs> probably in the bottom half of a top ten Final Fantasies for me. Yeah. Well, you know, Mr. Quest was really good, so. Yeah. What are you going to do? I mean, it was a big deal when it came out for the tech. Right. Like, I mean, this was pretty serious. Yeah, I think it was that. It was the historic significance of yeah, the game also, not on a Nintendo yes, platform. Yes, also, but, also the business factors. You know, it was a, just a very big budget. Yeah. 
take on these types of role-playing games that you hadn't really seen that much of. Yeah, my, my first E3 was the year this came out, so I remember like giant video screens everywhere of this yeah. game. At that E3, like they were pushing the shit out of this game. I mean, obviously they spent right, a fortune, right. a fortune on it. Yeah. That looked weird. That swirl mm. thing, I don't know. I keep hitting X to confirm everything. Oh, was it like this and Metal Gear in were games that were just circle? like, no, forget it. Yeah, circle. so was it, was it not, it wasn't standardized back then? It was, but there were exceptions. Okay, uh, yeah, this is Circle. I mean, I thought this was cool as shit when it came out. Like, all the 3D battle stuff, like the summons and everything. Like, right. I was super into this game at the time I was playing it. I just wouldn't say my memories of it have aged especially well. I assume this is the legendarily bad translation? It would have to be, right? I mean, these are just of the games, right? Right, yeah. Actually, I don't know if this ever got retranslated. Yeah, it probably did, right? They're for one of those re-releases on like PS4 or Steam or something? Probably, they probably did something to it. I think, didn't Sony handle the localization for this? Or they helped or something? I forget. Maybe. Yeah, I, I don't remember what the story was. Where the hell was Ted Woolsey? <laughs> Thanks for the tip. Earlier mark, X. Man, look at that. It's like you're playing the game. And then it just zooms right in there. Now it's a movie. Yeah, that's pretty wild, I guess, actually. At the time, it was completely mind-blowing. I only do, like, one more battle, maybe. Maybe I'll get to fight. And just him. some of the background elements, and, you know, just the... Like, that warning sign and stuff like that. Like, you know, it's got a weird hybrid look to it. Yeah. Yeah, the, like, the art style was weird, because they had been, well... Six was more kind of Victorian steampunk than anything. Yeah. But prior to that, it was very, you know, the series was very, like, just kind of traditional fantasy-driven. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, this this weird mix of, like, magic and kind of retro aesthetic, but, but future tech it was really strange. Like, yeah, this thing is a weird mishmash of art styles. I guess that's the Nomura effect, right? Yeah. Congratulations, ex soldier. Yep, that's me. Yo, is this your first time in a reactor? No, after all, I did work for Shinra, you know. All right. It goes on like this for, you know, about 30 hours. Okay. Oh man. That was my party. Actually, let's mess around with what really matters. Okay, yeah. Oh, that's right! It was like tinted in this one. There's not the whole window. Uh oh. You're doing like weird stuff with this gradient pattern. It's felt very futuristic because of this to me. <laughs> uh, what else is in here? Ah, that's yeah, okay. Pretty standard stuff. Hey, Final Fantasy VII, an okay game. Yeah, you can play that yep. on this. All right. All right, should we move on? Sure. Guess we've got this restore point if you ever want to. Get back yeah, to so it. I'll make sure to get back to that. Uh, I wonder if you should play this. Sure. Just because I don't know that I have ever played it. It's weird uh, in retrospect. Uh, GTA 3 was weird when it first came out. Now, based on what this and GTA 2 were. 
Uh, this is practically an arcade game. Hmm. You know, it's like score and you're kind of doing missions to complete. Uh, you're completing objectives to. Uh... What? Really? Yeah. Was this the European version? They just put it out. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Did they put that out over. Put this out over here. So this was before there was a Rockstar. Visual. Uh, this was DMA Design. Well, I know I think, Rockstar right? North used to be DMA Design. Yeah. Like, so this there, is. Yeah. This there, is still DMA. But like, even at the Take Two level, like the Rockstar name didn't even exist yet. Right. Huh. Or maybe this was where it first existed, but it was still. Hmm. Maybe like, in the U.S. it was. No, this game was published by ASC Games over here, I think, actually. Huh. I mean, the Housers were involved from day one, right? I guess there's an easy way to find out. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this is it's just a its a very strange game. Okay, there yeah. you go. That's sure. Uh, all right. Let's move on. Play a little bit of this. Uh, but yeah, this was a cool game. Uh, it, it, you know, the the top down, you know, it's just like this cutesy kind of top down thing. Uh, but man, it was just it got brutal so fast. It's also an intensely difficult game. Mm. Uh, okay, enter exit, attack fire, forward backwards, break, weapons, special. Uh, it's really weird to sit here and look at this and think that they've only made five of these. <laughs> Let's go with Travis. Like, put this and five right next to each other. Yeah. Uh, Liberty City. Okay, here we go. Gangsta Bang. Let's go for a joyride. Uh, but yeah, it's kind of, it's a game that operates on a timer and you, uh, if I remember right. That's right, you use the, the same controls to drive that you use to walk. Like there's a forward, back, like gas and brake basically for walking. Huh. So like it's tank controls almost, uh, in a weird way. Is the concept of carjacking in this? Yeah, because that, I think, like that. We need two yellow cabs for a bank job. Bring them to the docks in New Guernsey. So we need to find a cab. Like, can you just get in and drive any vehicle in this game? Yep, like that. Okay. Because I feel like that, more than anything, when GTA 3 came out, was like the big thing. Oops, wrong button. I mean, on top of it being open world in general, right? Yeah, but, yeah. But like the idea that you could literally just take and drive any vehicle you saw. It was just like, it was a level of freedom that you didn't expect from most games Yeah, back then. Uh, is this a bridge? Is this not going to get me where I'm going? No, it's just not nice. Let's see if this goes the way we want. Nope, it does not. Well. You know what, we're fucking up this taxi pretty bad here. Mine is... Oh, damn it. Yeah, this kind of really is just those games, but in overhead perspective, right? A little bit. Like, there's people wandering around, you've got a big city you can drive around, you can take and drive any car. Yeah, it's just, you know, it's way less story focused, like there's police response, you get stars, like, you know, like all that stuff is... Wow. Huh. But there's also like weird power-ups and stuff, uh, also. Okay. Is that the spot? Oh, okay. Yeah, it is. Okay. Now we need another cab. There's that subtle American satire that everyone loves. No, that's where I'm going, not where the cab is. The arrow's not going to help me here. Let's 
just take this car. Try to find a cab. Is that one? Ugh! Ugh! You. I assume two is just kind of more of this. Two is like a futuristic game. Oh, what? With like, uh, it had factions, and so you would do missions for the different factions, and that would uh, kind of turn things for or against. You know, like like certain factions would be hostile towards you based on what you did, and you know that sort of stuff. How futuristic are we talking? I mean. Have a craft some weird No, stuff, like vaguely or? near futuristic. Like it wasn't too bad. It was like laser guns or something, okay. you know? And didn't they make an offshoot? Like London or something? Yeah, something? GTA London 1969 was right. an expansion pack for GTA 1. Okay. Wait, expansion pack on the PlayStation? Yeah. I mean, yeah. also, this, this was a PC game. Right, okay. Um, but but yeah, they did do that expansion for PS1 and they made it work. Uh, like you had to swap discs and oh, like, weird. It, it was weird. Huh. Uh, and it came out after the fact? Yeah. That's bizarre. And I mean, this is back when DMA was still making games for other people at the same time, right? Yeah. Like, didn't they put out yeah, an N64 probably. game? My brother knows I'm banging his wife. Waste the son of a bitch before he finds me. Shh. Man, it's cold. Well, you know. They made a little short film to go along with this game. Huh. Oh. Okay. Oops, oops, oops. Damn it. Keep wanting to hit square to go backwards, but it was triangle. Okay, machine gun. There we go. That's going to assist us in our wasting this guy escapades. So I guess maybe it doesn't operate on a timer. Maybe it's just li it's lives. Oh, let's see. I did it again. Oh, that's a blockade. I'm not going to actually drive down the hill. Alley shortcuts. Nice like that. Oh, okay. This is. Gotta, gotta walk in here and shoot this guy. Am I, getting, I am getting shot now. Take that, brother. Yeah. Oh, now we have we have three stars or three cop heads, I guess. Oh. oh, here we go. Yeah, you're just getting like nonsense pager messages all the time. It's a strange fucking game. Also, I don't know if the heat from the cops ever goes away on its own or if I need to find like a paint shop. I think those existed in this game, I don't remember. Alright, a pistol. Oh. Let's uh, try and get a cop car. So yeah, you know, you, you kind of see it, I guess. I was hoping we would find uh, the 
the row of, uh, they look like Hare Krishnas. Um, when you run them over, it just says Goranga on the screen. Uh, top cars seem to handle the best of all the cars. Most of the cars, I guess. Oh, there they are. Gotta get them. Is that like a bonus or something? Got two more of them. Ideally, you just kind of hit them all in one go because they all walk in a row. Oh well. Oh boy, okay. These guys are gone. Yeah. <laughs> Seems a little tough to go back to. Yeah. I mean, it was a little tough when it was new. It was definitely, like, an acquired taste. Um. Oh, so I think this is a bomb truck. So, you know, it's you just kind of go through missions off these pay phones, and, and I think you just you kind of eventually get enough points to move on to the next level, and it's got Liberty City, and I think it's Liberty City, Vice City, and San Andreas. All in this game? Yeah. Oh, weird. And yeah, let's move on. Okay. Uh, when you run out of lives, it's like game over. Like it's, it's not like a story-driven thing per se. It's just kind of, you just kind of do your thing. I remember Intelligent Cube being hard. Hmm. Who made this? Uh, Art Dink? I don't know. Uh, we'll know soon enough. Masiko Sato made. Of course. Yeah. Whoa. Get it, it's for smart people. Oh. Maybe that's why I was so bad at it. Maybe they did a sequel to this for PlayStation 2. That maybe didn't come out in the US. Hmm. That had some style to it. Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. I mean, we could look at the rules, but... Nah, let's just dive in. Yeah, let's dive in. We've got a lot of games to get yeah, through here. Yeah. Whoa! So yeah, these blocks kind of come falling at you. And Frame you rate. Of, oh, I got oh crushed. Goodness. Okay, well, I already lost. Not exactly a lot going on on the screen, but it's still nice to see a nice smooth frame rate. Yeah. And reflections and everything. So that is, what is it? Yeah, you set a... Okay. <laughs> We've fallen and lost. So what is it? You set Your a... You highlight a block and then hit it again to trigger it, and then I think you want to trigger... You want to make sure you catch all of the First glowing stage. blocks. I think. Okay. With you so far. Can you mark two right next to each other? I can only mark one space one at a time. time, I think. Any control over how fast it advances? I can I can trigger an advance. And then 
I hit triangle and then everything disappeared. So maybe that's like a, what is it? Maybe you highlight a bunch and then build a combo of blocks and then eliminate them all at once. I need to take one more of those away. Oh. Oh. Quite a uh, fanfare they have going on. Yeah, as you play. Oh no! No! Uh. Yeah. So yeah, I think when you fall all the way off, you lose, uh, and so the the edge of the platform will fall off, uh, leaving you less room to maneuver as you as you fuck up. Okay. Uh, let's move on. Give this one a shot. Yeah, why don't you play a little jumping flash? Yeah. Maybe I'll take the next two and Yeah, then... sure. I remember liking this game quite a bit. I don't know if that means it's good or not. Yeah, that's... yeah. It may very well be... bad? Uh, you know, there weren't a lot of games like it when it came out. Yes. I guess there aren't... there still are. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I don't know how I would describe this game. I mean, it's first person, but... I guess it's a first person platformer. Is the best way to... Yeah. Something it's a strange like thing. You're a robotic rabbit. Mm hmm. It's kind of surreal. A robin, I believe. Yes. Exact. Ultra. Aloha, a black shadow threatening the safety of Not Baron Aloha. An evil oh, scientist no. who frightens children and is bent on slavery. A giant robot has seized a peaceful world and carried it off. Aloha's evil plan is to turn it into a huge private retreat for himself. Universal City Hall, here to help the people. Robert can do the job. Let's go, Robert. Jump and go. What the fuck is this? Jump and go. Oh, man. Jumping. I believe the sequel was called Robert Mondu. God, they made a second one? Yeah. What? Did it come out here? No. Okay. I, had uh, I don't think it did. Man, I kind of want to see that. Ready to go? Oh, yeah, also he was kind of like, well, no, I guess not. I was going to say it's almost kind of isometric. Like you sort of tap forward and it moves a little more than, it's a, the movement is weird. Yeah. Is what I'm getting at. You're a rabbit tank and you can shoot. Yes. That's kind of, yes, that's kind of how it, it feels. You need to get those pods, I think. These things? Yeah. And these giant carrots? Yeah. Get pod, get. Full extent of my jump. And if you hold the button down, you jump higher, or you jump in the air. Because there's like a look down jump, I thought. There was like, there you go. That's it. Whoa! Can I land on that guy? Yeah. Ah. Sorry, Mr. Frog. Frog wearing a top hat? Yep. Oh. Rocket Rock skip. It's like the look down at the ground on the second jump is smart because it gives you like yeah. more like intelligent maneuvering. Yeah, I mean you can literally use the reticle to line up what you're gonna land yeah. on. Uh, oh. Ooh, come on. Oh, that's a tricky one. Ah, forget it. Okay, yeah, so there is a stationary kind of look up and down. Ah. Okay, one way up there. Is there another one close to ground level? Did I lose my rockets? Am I not using them fast enough? I don't know. Oh god, that was a bomb. Yeah. Let's see, there's one over there, there's one there. Hmm. Can I make that jump? Maybe get on top of the blimp? Hmm. 
Go! Oh. Mother. Can you hit it again? Like a third time? Yeah. Oh, you totally can. Yeah. Get it. Right. So maybe you just go from here. Yes. Oh boy. Oh, here we go. Time to get the Chaos Emerald. You got a power pill. Power pill. Oh shit. Wow. Fucking freaking out. Man. Points. Yeah, this is weird, just kind of not really manual aiming as such. Yeah. You just sort of point at things as you move. Kind of works. Twenty-two seconds. Uh, does it just pop all the balloons? Probably. What am I missing? Our pill. All right. I did a perfect job. All right. So it's over right there. All right. Let me get this other jet pod. <laughs> Has the other jet pod clip out of existence? Yeah. I think it's over in this direction somewhere. I think it's on your left. Yeah. There it is. Whoa! Exit, I think, is down below to your yeah, right. Yeah, I saw that there's somewhere. Okay. There it is. Uh, yes. I did it. You did it. I'm the Robin. Eh, that's I guess, cool. Yeah, okay, that's maybe. This is a weird decent. curiosity. Yeah. That, yeah, you know, it's. That was maybe actually better than I expected. I feel like if you took this game and just could give it a better frame rate and draw distance, it would be. Kind of neat. Kind of neat. It plays okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Ready to go? if you really want to go that route, I mean, there are ways to do that. Uh, might be a little. I don't. I don't know. The draw distance might be a hard one. I don't know. We're, we're hard. Sure. It's, it's fun watching the frame rate get better as you look at the ground. Yeah. All right. Okay. So, shall we move on? We land in the lava. Okay, that's oh God. I don't right. know. Save Robin from Robin, the misery. No. Save restore point of Robin dying. Oh boy, that's a cursed restore point. Okay, which version are we gonna get? Did this this did have multiple discs, yep. didn't it? Yeah. God, I totally forgot about that. All that speech and everything. Yeah, it's two discs, wasn't it? Yeah, I think that's right. All right, American release. This is a game that I feel like benefited from things like, you know, you having a memory card mm. and yes. vibration. Yes. And the analog? Did it have analog control? I think so. I yeah, I don't know. I don't know. But it had it had vibration because yeah. there was a part where they wanted you to hold it up to your arm, right? right? Yeah. And forget Final Fantasy VII. Like this is the game that mattered. To hey, me. wait a minute. What? What does it do when you need to look at the back of the box? That's a good question. <laughs> What's the screenshot on the back of the uh, the box? This box. One four zero point one five. That's totally it. Ah, <laughs> that's amazing. I think that might be right. I think that might be right. So on the back of the PlayStation Classic box, they put the thing that. Yeah, that's that's pretty funny. If that was intentional, then well played, whoever did that. The nuclear weapons disposal facility. And the shit was so cool. Island. In Alaska's Fox Archipelago was attacked and captured. I played through it start to finish in, Japan, in Japanese first, not understanding a word of it. Yeah. 
This game is weird because it was also my first exposure to somebody pirating a PlayStation game. Oh wow! How, what did he like, do? Just look at the back of the box. I think it was like it was like literally the weekend I got to college in the dorm, and some dude I had just met had a CDR. Oh, and yeah, it was like yeah. also our first exposure to broadband internet. Oh, right. So this dude literally FTP. They go hand in hand, don't they? It was like right after this game had come out in Japan, he FTP'd a bunch of RAR files of this game and burned Gosh. them and played it. It was a very bizarre experience, but yeah, that was in Japanese too, and then I bought it when it came out here. That was a, a fun thing for message boards for a while, is having people uh, on message boards complaining about, I don't know what to do here, it keeps saying I need to look at the back, but what do I do? Yep. <laughs> Maybe look at the box you like, bought. Oh yeah, why don't you look at the back of your box? Yeah. It's like, what do you mean? Why don't you just tell me what it is? It's like, no, why don't you look at the back of your box? No, just tell me what it is! For whatever reason, I always thought that the fact that they did all these cutscenes real time was so much cooler than like the Final Fantasy VII treatment. I was a commander of, so they're still around. There are six. Because yeah. this is the game, you know. Yeah, right. Like, this is the right. actual game, and they're making it look like a movie. Psycho matters with this. Like that's why. That's why it was a big deal. Like any, you know, any video file can look like whatever you want. Sure, right. But the fact that they were taking the thing you were playing and playing with camera angles, like that's why this felt like it was pushing things forward so much. And revolver ocelot. I just, uh, you know, I mean, whatever. Like the game, the quality of the game, right? Like yeah. How, how much you actually enjoyed the game is a separate conversation. And that, yeah, and that was always the thing for me was liquid snake. Like the liquid gameplay snake. was very basic, and it was, you know, surrounded by all this stuff. That, you know, it was a lot of like time not playing the game. And this stuff is just so ambitious, though, for the time. Yeah. Like, look what they're doing with this rudimentary ass, shitty looking 3D graphics. Don't expect any official support. Very crisp audio as well. Like, they're really squeezing a lot of blood out of this stone, right? Yeah. About was it European Extreme? Was that the secret hardest yeah, difficulty I setting? I think that's right. <laughs> Did you play Twin Snakes? Uh, yeah, I reviewed that for yeah. GameSpot. Uh, I thought it was fine. I thought some of the stuff, was, some of the, some of the action sequences are a little over the top. I just kind of didn't need it. Yeah, it got a little more anime than I wanted. Right. But then again, that's Metal Gear. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like, I it mean, turned out that Metal Gear was anime the whole time. This game just yep. hit it a lot better. Oh, yeah, yeah. Stay alert. It'll be through here. I know it. I'm going to swap down a couple of balls and flies. Like, I always liked the balance this game struck of, like, earnest kind of military intrigue with just a little bit of weird stuff around the edges. Right, yeah. Like, Psycho Manus and, like, Vulcan Raven, there's supernatural stuff there. But it takes itself very seriously. Well,. I guess every Metal Gear takes itself seriously, but right. But that's why it works. I mean, you know, well, it got it got takes itself seriously, but also is goofy. Like I feel yeah. like it, it walks the line. It or, got it got so much more outlandish after this. I guess you're right. This is Snake, Colonel. Can you hear me? Loud and clear. What's the situation? I mean, Snake? obviously, in Once retrospect, in GS2 has revealed itself to be just as I expected. Disturbingly forward-looking. Sure. <laughs> Uh, but that was not apparent at the time. No. Contact me by codec. The frequency is 140.85. When you want to use the codec, push the select button. When we need to contact you, the codec will beep. All right. Bone conduction. Let me run around and play with the camera. Oh. You've got to crouch. There it is. Yeah, that. Like, fucking putting the credits over top of the playable intro. Oop. Oh, does it not? Oh, you have to get really close. Yeah. Like, all this shit was just mind-blowing. Stuff like that, I don't know if I'm gonna get this guy. No, that's bad. <laughs> You're getting this shot. It's not going to go well at all. 
trying to remember what this okay. is. Okay. Been a while. Yeah. There you go. Are they both out? Yeah. That's so Toyota. Don't know. Haven't seen me yet. Uh, there's a spot where you can crouch and get under. Yeah, I forget where that is. Oh. Damn, look at the reflections in the water. Yeah. Like, yeah. They were doing a lot with this thing. I got I to gotta snap a neck. I don't remember what the button is. Isn't it just square? I mean, oh, mass square? Yeah, I think you're right. Let me just die and try it one more time. Just like it in your next snap, I guess. <laughs> it's a cool Snake. game over screen, too. Yes. Snake. Snake. the best. I think you can... Can you go right under here? Yeah, even stuff like this, you know? It's just... They're doing so much more with this than this hardware should get away with. Right. This does not look amazing, you know, but... But they didn't let that stop them. Oh, boy. Fuck. Oh, the puddle. Yeah. Like, enemy awareness, you know? Like, enemies being aware of things like stepping in a puddle? There you go. I might, I might clip that puddle again. Oh, oh. fucking shit. Let's just go. Snake, there's an elevator. Yeah, thanks. I know. Oh, shit. Do I have to wait You for have to it? wait out there. That's right. There you go. Now you should be able to take it. Or no, it's not oh, here you have yet. To, there's a button you have to hit. No? Uh, maybe you have to wait for it to come back. I should have looked at the controls before we started this. I don't think there's like a press button maybe not. thing in this game. So maybe you do have to wait for it to come yeah, back down. Yeah, right. it comes back down. There are more guards on it, right? That's right. Shit. Yeah, that is grab and snap, right? Yeah, I think I'll try this one more time. Shit. What was that noise? run down the middle before he turns. Fuck! Uh, this is not good. Way to go, Tappy. That's right. And the weird ways that this game is like similar to like the original Metal Gear. Yeah. In some of its controls and just like like weird little things like that that's like surprising. Weird little holdovers. Did the other guy see me? God damn it! No, I think you. At least I snapped the neck. And he yelled. Uh. Hmm. All right. Oh, damn no. it! Whatever. Asshole. Got him. Hit something? I super don't remember. Yeah. That texture. Yeah, there I think is. you just have to be out of evasion long enough for it to happen. Or something. It's been a while. Yeah. I don't know if I ever played through this more than once. Hmm. I played through it in Japanese and played through it in English. And then I don't think I. You know, I messed with it here and there. Like, oh, it came out on PC, or let's, let's look at that, or, you know. But yeah, I, I reviewed it and kind of just moved on. It wasn't. I did not uh, love this game as much as a lot of other people did, that's for sure. I mean, I obviously recognize its simplicity and shortcomings as a game. Sure. But it was more just like what it implied for the future. Yeah, it's like, okay, I think, shit, they are able to do this now? Right. I can imagine where they're going to go with this stuff. Yeah, I, I think just a lot of my issues were just like, hey, I like to play a video game, and the cutscenes were so long, and there's just a lot of cases of, like, do one short, easy sequence yeah. to string together to another cutscene. Like, sure. it, was, it was just pacing stuff, really. Yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, I mean, I, I just I just love the way it looks and sounds, and I was very wrapped up in the story, you know. Mm. Like, yeah, the game. There's not that much to the game. Well, the I mean, the camera angle stuff. Yeah. The distracting guys and leading them around. Right. Like, like stealth games were not really a thing at this point, right? Like this was kind of it. Was, well, Tenchu came out before this, right? Yeah, Ten I want to say it was a PlayStation One game. I want to say Tenchu. Yeah. The first Tenchu came out a few months before this, I think. It had some of the, a lot of similar concepts, mm. I think. But it was a lot more movement. You know, you get up to rooftops and stuff like that. Yeah, you, like you were just a lot more. Tenchu was more game than this, yeah. if I remember. But the story stuff in this is what made me care about it. Like, good voice acting was kind of a big deal in right. this. Right, yeah. Because almost nothing had good voice acting back then. You know, people paying attention to editing. Like, camera cuts and stuff right, like that. Yeah. Like, this, yeah. this stuff was just... It's snake. Almost unheard of at the time. Anyway, especially when you think about where this came from, like yeah. what the original Metal Gear was, right, and How's all that. You ready? Yes. Out. All right, let's move on. There was just an attempt at making it cinematic that you just didn't see that much. Yeah. Does that look look lopsided, or am I crazy? Well, off to the right. Yeah. Well, no, that can't be right. It's almost like the S and the P don't line up oh. like they're supposed to. I'm, I think I'm. I think sometimes I'm losing my mind. Yeah. Sometimes when you run that BIOS at higher resolutions, it looks a little odd. Mm. And, uh, I don't know if that's the case here or not, but the town's being overrun by colored blocks. I so, hate when that. Happens. Yeah. All right, let's just get into Mr. Driller. Everybody's in a panic. Dig Dug's son. Canonically. All right, we've got a massive colored block spill on the 405 this morning. Let's go straight to Scrabble mode here. Was this original for PlayStation? This, this was this in card? arcades. Okay. Uh, oh! Ooh. So yeah, you dig, you don't want to get crushed. Uh, the colors and stuff will line up and save you in cases like that. And you occasionally need to get some air. Oh, God. Oh, that's all right. There was survival mode, so I lost. That's... That's kind of... That's Mr. Driller. It's a handful of different modes. This music sounds very shrill in a way that yeah. seems very strange. Yeah. So some light settings for arcade mode. Uh, you could drill through these blocks, but it would cost you a significant amount of air to do so. Hmm. So you could really only do it when things were going real bad. Yeah. And I've never been great at it. I just uh, drill like crazy and don't stop for nothing, and sometimes that doesn't really go too well. Oop. Nope. It's a lot to keep in your head at once. Yeah. It's a lot to pay attention to. Ah! Without a lot of reaction time. Nope. Is there any kind of fall damage? Nope. I feel like I always got Mr. Driller mixed up with Mr. Dew. Uh, Mr. Dew is a fantastic clown. Who also drills, correct? Uh, no, he's got a ball. I mean, he digs through the dirt. Okay, uh, but not with a drill. In a dig dug like fashion. Okay. Not with a drill. But he's got a magic ball that he shoots at uh, enemies. Oops. Oh, man. Screwed that up. All right. That's Mr. Driller. 
Yeah. That's a that's a, a weird a inclusion. Cool little game to include, I guess. I don't yeah. know. Like I, I think I always think about Mr. Driller as a Dreamcast game. Hmm. But you play uh, Abe's Odyssey? Uh, I think I rented it one time. Yeah. I don't. Hmm. Way into renting games back then. Yeah. Because I felt like most games were worth about a weekend. <laughs> and that was it. Yeah. And I mean, I didn't have the money to buy a lot of them. But like five bucks for two to three days of a game was plenty for me. Oh no, actually, I think I played this on like a PlayStation Underground disc. Ah. I think that's how I was exposed to this game. <sighs> yeah, I mean, this is... Uh... This game was... Pretty big, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like, I remember this making kind of a lot of waves. You know, it was like not, it was, it was kind of in that realm of like flashback yeah. and Prince yeah. of Persia and. Yeah, like a puzzle platformer. Yeah. And so you have to, you know, you kind of have to learn this game speak okay. thing. Okay. Because you have to right. talk to. That's right. You know, the, the nearby. The other uh, Mudakans. To get them to follow you, and you have to basically like go around this factory saving the, your your kind. Okay. I still have a I still have a Soul Storm Brew bottle opener in my house somewhere from my first yeah. E3. I think that was from the first one. Attitude. Yeah. There was a lot of it to go around back then. Uh, I never finished this game. I I, I never was. Yeah, the, the game speak thing was like added a versatility to it in terms of just like this is Rupture Farms. How you did stuff, but I just they I always found it a little cumbersome. Processing plant on Oddworld. I used to work here. Is that Lorne Lanning? I was. Really My understanding asleep. is that all the voices in this like game are Lorne Lanning. Yeah, that's what, that, that's what I thought for a very long time. He did all the voice acting, yeah. right? Probably up until like Stranger's Wrath. I don't know if it, well, there was Munch's Odyssey, that Xbox game. I don't know if he did everything. Mm -hmm. There was Abe's Odyssey, there was Abe's Exodus, yeah. and then Munch. And then Strangers? Then Strangers Wrath. And that was That's it, me. right? Was that the last I game they made? Uh, yeah. I mean, they put out the, did you play the, like, the kind of remake of this? Right, uh, I, I, a little bit, a little bit. What was that thing called? I crossed the meanest boss in the uh, world. Uh, Mullet, the Gluckin. It's just... Abe's Odyssey remastered, or did I have a? My whole life. Is that your name? Is that any good? Was that worth day. checking out? I, I don't know. Is that a is that a like shift between new and old graphics kind of affair? No, I don't. I think, I think it's, it's just, just a, a just a remake. Yeah. It was like new and improved edition. Right. Yes. Something like that. We used to make meat munchies. <laughs> Until the meaches were through. Yeah, so it's this kind of, you know, like, class uprising story yeah. of you freeing your kind we from this factory where they're being pies. turned into food. Kind of hyper-consumerist society. Yeah, let's move on. I feel like I remember... New and tasty, that's what it was. Yeah, that's right. Uh, I feel like I remember this getting a lot of hype in the sense that, like, Oddworld Inhabitants was going to be a very important developer. Does that yeah, make sense? Yeah, and, and, and they came out big with a, a lot of talk about like, oh, this is going to be like a five-game series, right. and we got all these ideas. You know, it was, it yeah. was very much like. I don't even know if they. I guess they don't really still exist as a studio, right? I don't know what the. Yeah, I mean, we'll see how they could because the they're really not put much out. Yeah. I went there for Stranger's Wrath. Yeah. Down to San Luis Obispo. Oops, oops. Alright. 
Oh, stand. I was just about to ask if the other workers are disposable in this game. Uh, well, you're supposed to be saving them all, oh, okay. not letting them get killed by dudes with machine guns like this guy. Hmm. Yeah. It's a rather disagreeable fellow. Yeah. buttons here to see what it which one's the fart button <laughs> all right yeah right. so that's, that's you got what you need to see you know it's i'll play some rayman i'll pass it over to you all right rayman one the original mm -hmm. is this also out on saturn baby that seems likely. So this was the only this yeah this would have been the only Rayman right, and then two was on Dreamcast. Yeah, like they did not do a second one on this platform. Two was like a Dreamcast they launch did a game, right? I think they ported it around. I, I know eventually Rayman Two ended up in a lot of different places, but didn't it? What was Ubisoft known for at this point? Like anything? Uh, like this? Rainbow Six. Yeah, like oh, that, yeah, I guess, okay, Rainbow like Six was out PC by then. Stuff, you know? hey, sure. Folks, you want to know what's going on? Let me tell you the story of Rayman. All right, let's, let's play some Rayman. Password. Password? I guess, I guess if we cared enough, I could Google one, but... Jump, fist, action. That's all you need. Yep. Kind of moves. Yeah, so this looks pretty good. Oh, you're dead. I'm dead. That's what the action button does. That's that's pretty good action. If I had to pick one, oh, I can I can crawl with the shoulder buttons too. This game has a real like Amiga game look to it. Yeah, sure. I never even owned an Amiga, and I kind of know what you're talking about. It's like all the art assets look kind of like cut out yeah. from the background or something. The fist button doesn't do anything. Not until you need it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah! You made it. Humble some, beginnings. Some guy is very excited that you made it to the end of the level. Yeah, this this doesn't look terrible. It's funny how much, well, I guess it's obvious why 2D games would hold up so much better on this console. Yeah, well, yeah. Oh, hey, okay. nope. Playing a platformer without instructions. You always must ask that question. Can I jump on dudes or what? Punch? No. It doesn't. Huh. Yeah, there's no. There ain't no punching Weird. on here. Yeah! 
One of those kind of rebooted recent platformers they did it was like Rayman Origins, Rayman Legends. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. They just made two of those, right? I think, I think they, that's I think right. they only yeah. did the two. They were, those were well received. Yeah, those things looked amazing. Also, I feel like the second one has been ported to a bazillion different places. Yeah. Okay. Now I can punch with my fist. Okay. There we go. Pretty handy to, to have a fist that's not attached. Yeah, you can get a lot done. To an arm. What do you think the wrist end of his hand looks like? Like where there should be an arm? I don't know. Yeah. I don't want to, I don't want to think about it. All right, this is Rayman. Yep. It's a platformer. Yeah. Man, look at that face. <laughs> that guy has seen some shit. Oh, yeah. Wow. I don't feel like I remember there being a director's cut of this on PlayStation, but it, of course, it was obviously the, there was. Wasn't this the DualShock edition? Maybe so. Or Yeah, and maybe it rolled some stuff in from other territories or something? I don't know. Because they, they issued it twice. So they were, there was, I think, I want to say it was called DualShock edition in some territories. But... Ah, it's a good Capcom logo. Yeah, intro. that's not bad. It's probably still my favorite one. Uh. Oh yeah. <laughs> God, right. I forgot there's yeah. FMV in this. Oh, that rules. <laughs> <laughs> what employee of Capcom US do you think that was? Yeah. Is that the accountant? Huh. Okay. Oh, okay. This. This. Well, I don't want to do advanced probably. If that's like a different control scheme or something. Mm. God, right, yeah. Straight up photos of the characters. Yeah. I never once had any interest in this game, even when it was new. Really? I just it, oh, I thought it was I amazing. Just could not stand it. Uh, I mean, it, you know, it plays like a nightmare. Right, yeah. I mean, it's... Like, going back to it... Flying around the forest zone, I mean, it plays like Alone in the Dark. Yeah. The city, where we're searching for the helicopter of our compatriots, Bravo team, who disappeared. Like, even at the time, it was a lot to handle. It was not great. But. Yeah. I think that was just enough for me to be like, eh. Like, in between that and not really caring for horror Bizarre stuff, cases. like, it just... That's, that's what it was for yeah, me. Yeah, like, it was such an effective horror game. You know, dogs jumping through the windows right, and yeah. other kind of, like, cliched, famous moments like that. Victims were apparently eaten. Bravo team went to the hideout of the group and disappeared. I mean, this is the franchise that gave us rookie cop Leon S. Kennedy. Yeah. So, not all bad. It's the franchise that gave us the Jill sandwich. Yep. You know, master of unlocking. Mm-hmm. Et cetera, et cetera. Barry. Where's Barry? Bravo team's helicopter. Nobody was in it. God. But strangely, most of the equipment was still there. Man. Yep. Look at that asshole. Look at that fucking guy. Soon discovered why. Imagine if this had been the aesthetic that this franchise had all along, Man, and they never got that, away from this. That would be really good. I think this is this is the only one that had video, right? I think you're right. And isn't it just at the beginning of the game? I don't think there's any video throughout. I think that's the case. Yeah. I don't know. <gasps> it's very, that's very like Sam Raimi, <laughs> that low to the ground, like super fast. Yeah. Uh, handheld camera stuff. That's very of the era. This just looks like it fell off a Sega CD, man. This is so corny. Like, it's kind of amazing. Yeah. I mean, that was the charm of this game. Like, moment to moment, the gameplay it was pretty, you know, effective horror. 
but anytime anybody was talking or this was happening, it's just cheesy as fuck. I think it was a good mix. Yeah. That guy's hair! Jill Valentine. Mary Burton. I am extremely going to go home and look up all the names of the actors <laughs> in this thing and see what else they did. Rebecca Chambers. <laughs> I just, yeah, I just really want to know if any of these people had careers outside of this. Resident Evil. Yeah. More do you need to know? You think it's safe? Mm. Oh. Hmm. What is this? Wow. What a mansion. Captain Wesker, where's Chris? Stop it! Don't open that door! But Chris is... What is it? Maybe it's Chris. Now, Jill, can you go? I'm going with you. Chris is our old partner, you know. Okay, let me handle this. This is really bad. Stay alert! Yeah. This is worse than I remember. <laughs> You're talking about like, the Metal Gear solid voice acting yeah. holds up pretty yes. well. Yes. This is... Uh, yeah, coming off of stuff like this. A dining room. Did you ever play that remake for you know, the GameCube and then it came out again? I, you know, like, like I, I've fiddled with it probably a little bit. They, I, that surely they re-recorded that stuff, right? I don't remember. I cannot. Like, please tell me they didn't reuse what? voice acting. What is this? What is it? What, what is this? Jill, see if you can find any other clues. I'll be examining this. Hope this is not Chris's blood. Fucking footstep sound. I think the first zombie is down here somewhere in this area. Oh, that's right. I think. Shh. No, no. I might, maybe I'm wrong. Okay, I was going to say, I thought she started with the lockpick or something like that, but maybe not. Well, shit. Maybe it's at the other end of the hall. You don't, like, go back to Barry and get the lockpick or something maybe like that, Maybe that's... That, uh, might be something like that. Oh, shit. Well, let me just ask see you. See if you can... No, he gave me an emblem. That'll come in handy. Maybe that zombie was at the other end of the hall. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> What's up? Oh, hey. Uh... I don't remember Slowly how to like turn, walk away. I don't remember how to do shit in this game. It's like hold R1 to raise the gun. You had to equip the gun for the menu, right? right? Oh man, I don't have a lot of breathing room here. There's like R1 to ready it and yeah, then that's square right. to shoot I think or something. That's right, yeah. Sir, it's, uh, X. Oh. Is he dead, dead? If the blood spreads, you know he's dead. That's what they say. Nope. Nope. <laughs> Fuck! I kicked his head off. There's the blood. Now you know he's dead. Okay. That was... 
You're fine. <laughs> that was two thirds of the bullets I had on yeah. one guy. Yeah, should have used the knife. First I guess. me in the game. Yeah, like this game's hard as hell. Like it's ridiculous. Uh, in terms of stringent, just yeah, ammo, ammo requirements. And Remember like fucking ink stuff. ribbons? Yeah. Like you could only save your game as many times as you had ink ribbons, and they were not that plentiful. This game is bizarre. Uh. Mostly, I remember this game as the game that killed my first PlayStation. <laughs> remember turning the PlayStation upside down? Yeah. Did you ever have that? Yeah, yeah. I had a PlayStation that wouldn't read discs super well anymore. Yeah, and I, I rented this game, and it would hang at these doors. Like, oh, wow. I could play the game for about 10 or 15 minutes, and then it would just start hanging on those doors. And I just learned to fucking despise those doors more than anything. What yeah. Because it? it was the sign that my PlayStation was dying. Let me take care of this. And then, yeah, I think once I learned you could turn the PlayStation upside down so it wasn't overheating anymore, it worked for a while. What I thought it wasn't a heat it? thing. I thought it was it was taking pressure off of the... Was killed too. Like, some Maybe spring on the laser. Creature. Oh, I don't know. I always heard it was the... Anyway, you were letting heat escape by turning it upside down out, the, out those vents on mm. the bottom. This thing totally... <laughs> what if we can get a shot? This thing totally yeah, has the vents on the, the bottom. Vents. It's got them vents. Got the, got the little... Slats down there. Yeah. yeah. All right, should uh, we move on? Yeah, that's yeah, all right. That's Resident Evil. That's Resident Evil. A uh, landmark game in yeah. some respects. Uh, I don't know the first thing really about this. I can take the next couple if you want. Have you played this? Yeah, I reviewed this. Really? Yeah. What? I reviewed Persona One. What? Oh, this Atlas intro was always so ugly. Just looks like sponges or goopy slime, and then it pulls out. To... So this, so this came out here as Revelations Persona. Yeah, but then wasn't this an offshoot of the Shin Megami Tensei series? Yes. Yeah. So you know, you kind of know it more as Shin Megami Tensei Persona, right? These days, but. Uh, but there, like, there were other games in that series before this game, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, but this was, you so know, Persona is like... an offshoot that was kind of more, you know, it, it took a lot of the, it, it took some of the ideas uh, from those games, but kind of put it into more of this kind of high school setting. And, right. And this sort of stuff. Yeah, because there were other... I'm not super familiar with the non-Persona. Yeah, I think there, yeah, I think there were other offshoots too, like Devil Summoner and stuff yeah, like yeah. that. I guess this is the only franchise that's still around. Uh, they, they get back to, you know, it seems like they pull one out here and there. Um, but the thing with this game, you know, like it, it kind of stood out as being, like you could talk to the monsters and, okay. and kind of talk your way past them. And, and that kind of parlay style was, it was a neat idea. Uh, but like the dungeons are first person. Oh yeah, okay, I remember. I've and that's a super movie. hassle. Huh. Whoa. It's, are we breaking the fourth wall right at the beginning? Mark's a troublemaker who gets oh, into mischief. Of course. He doesn't get along with Nate. But I, I don't know your stupid. <laughs> <sighs> so localizations were, you know, you know, a little rough around the edges back then. I couldn't tell you the first thing about this game these days. Though. Hmm. Is it all 2D? Besides those dungeons? The dungeons are like the first person. But, all, but, all, but, but this is but all. This is all, yeah. Huh. I always liked playing 2D games on this system because it felt like maybe a little glimpse of what games would have been like if 3D graphics hadn't happened. Yeah, you know that was kind of the value of the Saturn in yeah, a lot of ways. Right. Know. It's just like here's the alternate universe where everything just remained 2D and got better and better. Yeah. Ah, I don't know if I can recommend that course of action, but...
I, I feel like, like every other Persona game, this game is going to probably take a pretty long time to get going. Yes. So I don't. You're probably right. I don't know how much we'll get out of just looking at the intro to it here. Uh, I feel like I saw after the the game list for this thing came out, I saw a number of people saying this game has been pretty rare and expensive mm. until recently, or until this, basically. Like I want to say I saw it going for like 200 bucks. Huh? Does that seem? It seems totally plausible. Yeah. Yes, this probably would have gotten a pretty small print run, right? Uh, yeah, probably. They're conducting the ritual. I believe they make some kind of little ghost appear. Hmm. Or at least that's the idea. All, all praise to our Dark Lord. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, what are kids if not great at summoning demons? Right. Worshipping the devil. Ghostly little girl. See, it's creepier because it's a little kid. Yeah. Do you remember what you gave this? I seem to remember it doing... Was it a favorable review? Yeah. That seems bad. Well, yep, yep, yep. Some more shots of this butterfly here. Anything yeah, else? Can we skip? We cannot skip this. Yeah, let's just see where we end up here. Okay. Whoa. Oh boy. Uh, sure. A little on the nose, but okay. Yeah, you know. Welcome. My name is Philemon. Cool. I live between the world of consciousness and unconsciousness. So tell me, who are you? Wait, come back. Yeah, didn't want an answer, I guess. I really value games that just give you a default. Yep. Character name. World Wide Web William, that's what they call me. Excellent. Cool. There are not many who know their own identity when they have come to this point. It seems you have passed the first test. By the way, have you noticed you carry more than one you in yourself? Perhaps the merciful you, the graceful angel you, mm -hmm. or What's the this guy cool talking about? demonic you. It's your we true live self. behind many masks. And you may at this very moment be living behind many masks. But you claimed your name, proving you know who you really are. I admire your strong will and bestow my power. I don't trust you. this guy. Yeah, he doesn't seem Persona, to think he's just hitting us up for a donation. The power to yeah. call on others within you. Sometimes merciful, sometimes cruel. These cells are embedded deep within your soul. This power will help you through your quest into the future. Go back now into your world. The world that's locked between time and space. 
Peace out. I'm just gonna hang out over here in my space foyer. Yeah. For all the time. Does this have the same thing of the, the same kind of structure of the later games of like returning to school over and over, like living out a I, life and going to class? I don't think it has too much of that. It, it's been a really long time since I've played this. Uh, but I think that was something they hit on more in three. Hmm. Uh, and that kind of became the standard. Uh, two had, well, yeah, I had one and two, man. I barely remember them. Did you play all of them? Uh, I didn't, but there were two versions of two. Hmm. Uh, and I think only one of them came out in English, if I remember right. But Innocent Sin and there's another one. Right. The shot on the back of this box looks like a familiar Persona guy. Oh yeah, Does that that's Igor. Igor. Is he a series mainstay? Yeah. Okay. But yeah, I, I, think, uh, I think I did see some people saying like it was nice for this to be on here just because this game is pretty hard to come by these days. Yeah, that's, so that's, uh, so that's cool. That's cool. Let's go talk to this plant. If nothing else. What is this thing, a hundred bucks? Yeah. And we don't expect it to be tough to find, right? As far as we know. As far as we know, assume, yeah. Assume they will make plenty of them. Apparently talking to the plants where you go to save your game. Proper memory card operations. Okay, I think if we said dungeon when we head out here, so maybe we'll... It says dungeon right there, yeah. yeah. Maybe we'll see a fight. Oh yeah, look at that, huh. <laughs> High school is kind of a dungeon when you think about it. Yeah. not to use that hole, stupid Dean. All right, I think we're not going to get into a fight anytime yeah. soon. Well, I'm, I'm, it's nice to see the first person stuff at least. Yeah. Can you go left there? Maybe there's something in there. Okay, so we can get a little bit of... Actually, yeah, maybe it is. was in fact the gym. All right, well, yeah. they get the idea. And you can run. Yeah, so you can, you know, you can fight, so you do role-playing game things. All right. Uh, R4 was the first, was the fourth Ridge Racer. Uh, it was the first one to kind of try to do a little more of a career. Hmm. Thing. You know, the first game was pretty much a port of the arcade game with, like, you know, one additional mode or something, you know. Uh, Ridge Racer Revolution was more or less the same. Uh, Rage Racer. Rage Racer. Had its stuff. And then, then R4 was like, hey, here's this. Oh, this is the Reiko Nagase, yeah, the Reiko Nagase. vehicle. Okay. Yeah. Um, sure. Say no more. And uh, this game just had a cool visual style, like the design to like its menus and stuff, if I remember right. Let's get into it. This series just gets super drift heavy at a point. 
It always was. Uh, I think what happened is like people started, uh, you know, for me anyway, I started understanding what you actually needed to do to play it. Uh, All right, let's just. Welcome to the Real Racing Roots 99 Grand Prix. Here are the rules of competition for this Grand Prix. The Grand Prix consists of three stages, okay. with a total of eight races. It is skippable. Pack racing. Soul blue. Mappy. Team Mappy. Yeah. Ease of handling on Team Mappy. As much as I am personal, uh, no, we're fuck it. We're going we're going team mappy. Alright. Like I don't think this is how I want my cars to control, but hard to not hard to not choose team mappy when given the the option. I mean he's a mouse, he's a cop. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna side with the police and try to, you know, see, show him that there's a world outside of the law. Donald Lewis, the manager. Try and go drift. See if I can play this game properly or not. It's been a while since I played a Ridge Racer, so I'll probably be terrible. But you see what I mean? Like it's got a it's got a yeah. style to it, you yeah. know. Like uh, all the menus and just the, the overall look of it is uh, yeah, for is sure, pretty cool. Especially at that time, when a lot of menus just straight look like shit. Yeah. <laughs> or there just wasn't a lot of consideration given to things like menus and art treatment on stuff like that. Real Racing Roots '99 in Puka Line. Happy car. Yeah, I remember this. I remember that song. Yeah. It's weird because, you know, you wouldn't think you'd want a driving game with a, a D-pad, but because of the way Ridge Racer does its drifts and stuff like that, like the D-pad is actually kind of fine because it's more about like timing when you're letting off the gas to start a drift and when you're kind of getting back on it to, to rein it back in and, and kind of retake control of the car. Um, you know, it's, it's not a simulator. Oh. It still feels weird to me to this day to think about what a non-entity Ridge Racer has become. Yeah. Like, did they just stop selling? Like, I guess they must have, they must right? Have, you know, like they... Like, I, I, I just, I'm constantly thinking, like, surely Ridge Racers are going to come back at some point, right? Like, that yeah, franchise you know, they're, they're was huge. New Ace Combat, like, you know, like if you look at Namco, they've been very big on, you know, kind of getting back into some of their franchises that they haven't, you know, touched, like Soul Calibur. Yeah, sure. Like, 
course, I don't know, maybe racing games in well, general are just kind of in a weird spot. Yeah. But like, you know, with Ace Combat being like a, you know, a VR game and all that stuff, like it certainly seems like you could do a Ridge Racer oh, VR. Yeah, the VR Ridge Racer would be cool. Are there a lot of VR driving games? Yeah. Oh. Little flashes of it kind of coming back to me, but I'm just not. Oh, see, I thought that was gonna be a sick drift and it was gonna start and go great for me. It did not. Um. You know, the, the other problem is, like, this track we were just racing on, I think, is in every Ridge Racer after this. Like, they, they yeah. got into this habit of, like... Recycling. Yeah, where Ridge Racer stuff. was just kind of like, hey, here's another Ridge Racer game. It's got all the tracks from all this other stuff, and we've changed the boost mechanic a little bit, and it's, you know, it's on PSP, you know? Right. Like, 5 and 6 were not that different, Xbox 360 and PS3. Uh, and yeah, like every platform was kind of getting its own custom Ridge Racer, sort but, of, right? But not that custom. Yeah. All right. Let's play around a puzzle fighter. Let's, let's not fuck around <laughs> anymore. Like, of every game on this thing, this game, by a factor of about 100, is the one I would actually want to play the most Yeah. in this day and age. And this thing comes with two controllers. Yeah. So that's like, cool. Like, it, eh, I, I started to say it was worth it to buy this thing just to have an easy way to play Puzzle Fighter 2 player. That might be a little much. 100 bucks for Puzzle think, Fighter. I don't uh, think it's you know, quite worth two, I mean $100 you know, it's, for... It's Puzzle Fighter and Tekken 3, so... Yeah, Tekken, yeah, sure. Uh, but this game is very good. Yeah. A lot of drunken puzzle fighter in school. Oh yeah. Uh, isn't somebody who is who is who is over overly powerful in this? Is it Sanko? Somebody. I remember somebody being thought of as like god tier in this game. Uh, and I forget I who. Know, there, you, there's oh shit. Well, Dan and Akuma also. Pick for me. Like I almost want to say when they put this back out on XBLA, they rebalanced it. They might have. Yeah. And like somebody's pattern, I think, was just too savage or something yeah. like that. But I want to say it was hers. Oh, playing a lot of Tetris effects. Just keep pushing up to try to drop stuff. Yep. Oh, that's right. You get the same pieces in this one. Yeah. Well, I fucked up already. Yep. Totally blowing it. Oh well. Hard for me to see the uh, like being colorblind. The difference between the was it is it green and orange? Uh, green and yellow. Green and yellow. Okay. Yeah. See, those look the same to me. So it's turned my puzzle fighter strategy into just try to get those two colors close to each other, and eventually it'll probably trigger some kind of cool combo.
Oh boy. Well, shit. I got some very large gems down there that I can do nothing with. Damn it. Stupid eyes. Yeah, I'm fucking boned. Oh, got no room to do anything. Shit! Oh, fuck me. I'm screwed. Oh! Reprieve! Give me a red! God damn it! Ah! <laughs> oh. Man, if I had the swings gotten that, in this game get really oh. crazy. If I had gotten that red where I needed it. Wait. What? Yeah, like stuff like that happens. It gets very hard to come back sometimes. But like if you've got the right gem set up in the right spot, like all of a sudden you're swinging 90 back my way. Totally, yeah. it's, it's just it's just all contingent on getting the thing you need. Yeah. I uh, fucked that up. Yeah, like I've just got nothing to work with right now. All right, yeah. Puzzle Fighter. Hell of a game. Hell of a game. Let's move on. Okay. Siphon filter was good. It was rough around the edges, and it was just... I mean, it was the American Metal Gear Solid. Yeah, it was sure. Like, no stealth, just kind of more straightforward action, but gadgety in a James Bond way at times. Uh, but way more of just a shooter. It's Metal Gear Solid without any weird shit. Yeah, right. Just played totally straight. And then Eidetic became Sony Bend, didn't they? Uh, or did Sony Bend just do a later? I don't know actually. But what about the serum? It's a good question. Nothing. Now I will show you how I deal with it. Siphon filter is the name of a virus. Finish it. I think that's right. With pleasure. I think it was the same studio that did all of these. These are the coordinates Ellis sent. Yeah, Gabe Logan. Over there. Yeah, they had these flat faces. Yeah. It's a weird style. Let's, let's get into it. Okay, uh, Terrace Viral Attack, DC Subway Station, Interpol, Identities, Targets, Paramov, SADCOM. When does the operation begin? Our intelligence within the FBI was not clear, but rumors men are already inside the subway. Is it the same virus? Yes, enough to eliminate everyone within a hundred miles or more. Procedure? Standard intercept and eliminate. These are from our contact inside Interpol. Jenkins' team is already on search and defuse. You are the trigger. I recognize Anton Gerdu and Mara Aramov. Who's the other one? Pavel Kredic, Roma's communications Some Somewhat expert. rough voice acting. When you yeah. eliminate him, you'll also have to destroy his calm uplink. You'll be dropping like to voice. the strike zone when the firefight begins. Yeah, he's just really gravelly. You'll have an hour to find your targets and take them out. He's really putting it on. Oh, oh yeah. What they're dealing with? Do I have to kill no. everyone? I've got an ID match for Romer on level one. Girdu is on level two. No location yet for Kravich, and I don't see any sign of Aramal. Copy. I'm on my way. All right, let's see it. Run around. Yep. Whoop, whoop, yep. Whoop, it's that whoop, weird lean. Whoop. Yeah, look at that's, the weird way the way he just leans and into his turns. And that's L2 and R2 to do this. So it's like you're strafing, you know? You're, you're literally, it's a strafe button. And so it's just his swivelly hips, just woo, 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 very sexy. 
That kind of like, yeah, it was, it was like a pretty generous lock on, right? Yeah, but then you could manually go in if you wanted to. Also, the guns. And stuff. The guns really sound and behave like Goldeneye guns. <laughs> yeah. Now that I'm seeing now, this. Now that, now that we're going back to it, yeah, maybe a little bit. Uh, did, did you see the year on this? I think this is like 99. I don't know, yeah. This definitely would have been after Goldeneye, I think. Oh, yeah, it had to have been. Is this the taser? Yeah. All right. I'm gonna play this the same way we played it on the demo derby. I'm just gonna fucking zap a dude. <laughs> Until he catches on fire. Leon, Romer's men have locked down the subway entrance security gates. You'll have to find the bypass switch. See if you can find a service elevator. Yeah, okay. Very dark area. Particle system. Yeah. Physics. Okay. Oh, wow. Huh. Okay, then. Yeah, you just hold down the button. Just keep zapping them. That's really it's good to be sure. He's still burning. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. All right, that's not for filters. <laughs> yeah. All right. Probably one of the other games that holds up the best on here, yeah. I would guess. I would assume so. Uh, European version. I wonder if they had to pull different versions based on like what licensed music was in it, or mm. if maybe there were some differences like that. Like It seems strange that some of these end up being like the SCEE versions and some, or SCEA, and like it's just, it's a little weird. All right, we all know the rich history and story of Tekken. Oh wow! Not a lot of characters unlocked out of oh, the game. Oh, that's right. I forgot you had to... no. Hey, Hachi. No, it it's fucked. You, you always had. A, I mean, you know, until. Yeah, right. That's that's. Yeah, I guess he was like a boss for a but long like time. Like no right? Kazuya, even. Shit. I don't even know who to play then. I mean, Eddie Gordo is here. Ah. Uh, maybe some Wa. Yeah. Wa wrong. I don't remember how to play this dude. It's a lot of kick buttons. Yeah. Round one, fight! <laughs> Does he even have a punch? Yeah! Fight! Maybe it's just the case of like, you know, hey, they're, you know, when you hook this up to a to something that's going to run in 720, it's going to run at that resolution or something, but this looks sharper than a regular PlayStation. Mm, yeah, maybe so. I think Tekken 3 still holds up. Like, Tekken 3 is probably the earliest you could go in Tekken and still have it feel at least a little bit like modern Tekken. Yeah, there's like no load times. This game felt like it fucking fell out of space when it came out. Just because of how much extra shit it had in it. Round and like it was just, fight. it seemed like it impossible, you know? Sure. Yeah. 
Is that blockable? No. Oh, uh, still coming out of the kick, maybe. Round maybe it is. This seems a little slow. Yeah, actually. I wonder, man, if we had the equipment to measure this sort of shit. So, all these European versions. Oh god, it's not a PAL thing, is it? Are these running at 50 hertz? Oh god. Surely not. I, I, we'll have to, I, I'm gonna have to like dig out my copy of Tekken and we're gonna have to look at it. Cause that, fuck. It's a weird deal breaker. Uh, anyway, this, this, I feel like we've heard about that by now. Yeah, I feel like some of the people the saw it early release. Reporting. Tekken Force mode is that weird side scroller. I assume this has Gone in it. He was mm. a licensed character. Huh. Uh, but I, yeah, I don't know. Let's move yeah, on. I would hope they haven't altered any of these games. Yeah. Uh, uh, just to let you take this one. Great, thanks. Uh, I don't understand why this is on here. Yeah. I assume it is primarily because of the, is a pop, yeah, the popularity yeah. of recent Rainbow I Six. This. this Rainbow Six is not a game you think of the PlayStation One. Like you know, no. it's like these games came out here, but this wasn't where you played them. If you played them, you played them on PC. Those right. Were... Yeah, this this seems like a weird use of the slot. I feel like until the Xbox 360 came out, Clancy games were super PC focused. PC. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, this is a strange one. How rebellion did this? Weird. Okay. The year is 1999. Okay. <laughs> Quick little animation of a dude loading a magazine. It's uh, sort of a bummer that the instruction manuals for the games and stuff are on a website and not built into this thing. Yeah, that does kind of stink. Especially because like a game like this, just like, what am I even doing? Did the Nintendo ones have stuff like that built in? No, it was the same deal in a lot of cases. Huh. Uh, I'm just like, look at this fucking dude, John Clark. You'd think they'd have like source stuff, whatever the source assets are for things like that, like original printing type stuff, but, but maybe not. Yeah. Maybe that stuff slips through the cracks in a giant company more than you'd think. Yeah. Bogart. Where's my man Ding Chavez? There he is. Yeah, right there. Great. I love it. <laughs> okay. That's a really silly little loading animation. Here's this mostly black screen. Good luck. Can you switch between characters? I assume so. Yeah. Did this have no in-game controls at all? Okay, there we go. Because I was going to say, if you actually have yeah. to go to a website to see this stuff, that is pretty unfortunate. Auto run, jump. Okay, so there's no like open door. Like I was kept thinking like I was going to walk in one of these doors. But maybe not. Jump off the side. I tried. Let's see where dude number three is. You already played that guy. Oh, this is this one. No. Ah! They were nice enough to leave the door open. Yeah. 
Now there's more doors. Yeah, that's how I get the shit done. I'm not, I can't even, I can barely even tell what the hell I'm looking at. This screen is so dark. I don't know how it looks on the feed from people watching at home. Maybe they can see more than I can right here, but all right, that's, that's Rainbow Six. Ah. All right. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why they felt the need to put that on there. You twist the metal fan? Ah, uh, especially. Okay. I mean, I'll, I'll play this and you play Wild Arms. Okay. If you're asking, should we play two player, then nah. sure. Yeah, let's just see what it looks like full screen. Car combat is a genre that had a specific place in a specific time. Yeah. And once like, that time was over, it was over. Like I said, I felt like I got what I needed out of a lot of games back then in a single weekend. Yeah. This was one of them. <laughs> Single track is a good developer name. Yeah, it is. Weren't they like a military contractor before they started making games? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, Thumper. <laughs> a lot of photos of people in these games. Yeah. I feel like the cop electric attack was good. Do you think that was just like, those were just like royalty free photos or something? I wonder. Or do they like find a guy in the marketing department and dress him up as yeah. a cop like, okay. for an hour, take some pictures? Shaky Jake. You know, just, oh God, bumper with the fire. There it is. Wasted all my specials. Sounded like among the people who do like Twisted Metal, 2 is the one they wanted. Yeah. You know, it's just, you know, the aiming, you don't really aim, you just kind of point the car at stuff, and that's... It feels like this was a genre that was meaningful before analog sticks and people found out ways to make just straight up first person shooters work on consoles and yeah. then like this genre just kind of ran out of room. Yeah. yeah I like to look at those missiles. With yeah. The, with the trails on them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it is. kind of satisfying to land a missile here and there, but yeah. That's me, because my blown up body. Did David Jaffe work on these? Yeah. Like, is this what he became known for before God of War? I, yeah. I think that's right. Yeah, I mean, he, did, he was the name attached to that last, like, Twisted Metal reboot. Right. What was Black? Uh, Black was kind of a, an edgy take on Twisted Metal. Okay. Was that PlayStation 1? It was 2. 2. Okay. Yeah, so it was like, it was like you know, oh, PlayStation 2 is capable of these, this looks way more grim and... Congratulations. All right, there's our password. All right, make sure you remember that. That's Twisted Metal. All right. Uh, yeah, just, you know, never, not for me. All right, Wild Arms, let's play some Wild Arms. All right. I remember this game being all right. Yeah. I, doubt, yeah, I doubt we'll see that here playing the very beginning of an RPG. It's nice that they've got some longer games in here yeah. between Persona and Final Fantasy and this. Like, sure. You know, some, some stuff you can really sink your teeth into if that's the genre you like. Yeah. If not, <clears throat> might be... No oh, media vision, of course. Good. It's a great logo. Classic look. Yeah, that's very mid '90s Macintosh. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I bought this. I remember not hating it, but I want to say this came out earlier in '97, before Final Fantasy VII. Yeah. You might be right. And they were kind of like really getting some mileage out of like, hey, everybody really wants a cool RPG for this yeah. console. Here's one. <clears throat> in advance of the one you actually want. Right. It's got anime in it. Yeah. Well, let's, let's get I into remember, it here. I fucking remember this song.
Yeah, this thing had a weird fantasy anime western vibe to it. Yeah. And they made a few of them, didn't they? Uh, yeah. I want to say they made at least three? It's like decent animation. Yeah. All right, skip this. All right, fine. I can't, oh yeah, I can't. Oh, weird. Huh. I don't remember that at all. Bad. It's the end of the outlaw era. Civilization is coming and sweeping across the West. And now there's cars. An outlaw lifestyle is just uh, harder to lead nowadays. Dream Chaser. I want to say, besides the anime video, this felt a lot like a 16-bit RPG. <laughs> right. Like, I don't think there was much about this that was very remarkable, other than the fact that it had some video here and there. I don't remember what the combat is like at all in this game. I do remember that. <laughs> That's pretty good. Straight out of Link to the Past. Can I pick up the chickens? All right. Straight out of Link to the Past. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's why I thought it was very 16-bit esque because yeah. it's just Zelda the running the, yeah. the wind up on the run and the the wall bounce. Nope. <laughs> to go fight something. Okay. Do I even have any weapons? Tools. Uh, yes. All right, nice long knife. Wow, even out here, huh? It's weird. Oh yeah, okay, it was 3D combat, that's right. Ah, cool. Kill that balloon. Okay. Got that Gela. Yeah. Let's see what it looks like in this cave. Ooh. Man, when that first popped up, I thought it said Smurf Law. <laughs> I was like, oh man. The ultimate law. Is that it? Yeah, I guess this game's not terrible. I don't think I ever got super far in it. Yeah. Uh, I remember people having some fondness for it. Yeah. Uh, but again, I think it was also just like maybe the first big RPG on the system. Well, or one of. There's some bad ones along the way, like Beyond the Beyond. Oh God, right. There's some rough. What did Ark the Lad come out on? That was PlayStation. That was a PlayStation game. Yeah. I want to say those were maybe the first. Yeah. And this was pretty early too. And then Final Fantasy came out. It changed it all. So 
we can use a magic spell. It looks like magic here. A oh, weird. The cursor like bounces back to the middle if you don't hold it. That's. Oh god. Oh, I just like, like some auto, auto attack and stuff. I just want to use some. Uh, maybe this guy doesn't have any magic. Yeah. Bummer. Oh wait. Oh, there it was. Uh, uh, it's up, right? Isn't it? oh, what is this force business? That's. Okay. Right. Spell effects are how RPGs were really judged back then. Yeah. I launched a rocket at that fucking dude out of a big pistol. Nah, uh, you know, of the three RPGs on here, this is maybe the last one you would play? Maybe? I don't know. It depends on your taste. Like, you know, not everyone's gonna like Persona 1. It's, yeah, it's, it's, yes. the, the, that first person dungeon stuff, I think, is super divisive. God, you can kind of just go wherever in this thing, huh? Seems like it. <laughs> can't figure it out! I don't know! Yep, that's... Alright, well, I guess we can't figure it out. And the strange device sealed the door shut, so yeah. I think it's gonna do it for the wild arms. Let's, uh, look at those, uh... See if we can find the, uh... I guess it'd be in guides, or is it settings? The licenses? Yeah. Yeah, it's... Okay, here we go. Or legal notice? Yeah. Open, open source, source software. software. Let's see. Got that GNU. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there. Yeah, straight up. Okay, huh. So I guess that means this thing has an ARM processor in it, probably. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's what that would make sense. for. That's right, filesocket.c. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, wow. I compiled a version of also utils on my NAS not long ago. <laughs> nice. Uh, cool. Yeah, okay. Sure. Android tools. Yeah, uh, all right. I think it, I saw Debian in there is maybe what this thing is yeah. running or something, but... Uh... This thing's okay. It seems neat. I don't know. It's like, right. It's not necessarily the 20 games I would choose, but I, I, and I... And I feel that way about more of the games on this than I do on some of the stuff Nintendo has done. Yes. Like, these these feel a little more off of my personal mark, but... Well, Nintendo has the advantage of owning the rights to right. most of the games that matter. Yeah, that's true. Whereas... I imagine this thing was, even even in this state, is probably, like, hard on a business. Yeah. PlayStation. Uh, and PlayStation was very much a third-party console. Yeah. Yeah, uh, so, I, you know, that's, that's uh, maybe a little bit of a bummer, but it seems, you know, pretty well made for what it is. Yeah. Grand Theft Auto 1. It's a weird one. Yes. And I think that's going to do it for us. All right. 100 bucks. Thanks, Brad. This thing's out there now-ish? Uh, soon? Out, uh, yeah, out pretty soon. Out, yeah. Out early December. December. Yeah. And uh, Stick it in the stocking. Yeah, it'll fit. Yeah. Thing's pretty small. It certainly will. Yeah. Cool. All right. Thanks, Brad. Yep. See you.